Sorry, Jack. Welcome to Squad Ops. This is Xbit, and I'm joined with Jay Remick. Why don't you say hello, Jay Remick? Hello, everybody. It's a Saturday night, and we're playing Silent Vigil. This is a op that takes place at night. It's on Logar Valley. Uh, we played it earlier in the EU session, and like always, it delivered in its name, being that it's a deadly vigil, for sure. So, for commands tonight, we've got Karma Cut going against Kamikaze. What do you got for squad leaders over there, Jay Remick? Oh, uh, for the squad leaders led by uh, Kong, uh, I have Click. Oops, I'm sorry, one second. I have Quickly, <laughs> Shadowed Ritual, The Gaming Brennan, and Hamley. All right, the qualified crew. Uh, for the INS this round, we've got Karma Cut commanding. We've got Best Pony, Google Trex, uh, SM Premier Paradise, and Jack Reynolds. So another qualified crew of squad leaders on the INS side. So it's going to be a good matchup tonight. Uh, it's going to be fun to see how they uh, how they play against each other. Yeah, definitely. Well, it adds a really, really tough. Um, aspects of the game there's definitely the change in lighting really does make a difference um, i think everybody's set to a standard i think it's 2.24 gamma yeah we're just looking for enemies and trying to cause a distraction up north yeah yeah the night element definitely uh, adds to this op uh, i know that uh, when you're moving around if you got the right gamma settings you can't hardly see anything and uh it allows the INS actually to get kind of in the close quarters fights out in the open to the U.S. and uh, limits the U.S. engagement range. And they have to, uh, you know, they have to do some route clearance tonight, so it's going to be pretty dangerous for them to uh, go ahead and move down those roads, those open lanes, while the INS is hiding in bushes and stuff that normally you would be able to see uh, if you were on a daylighted map. But when it's the nighttime, it makes everything dark and hard to see. What's you can't make out if that's a piece of paper or if it's uh you know the INS popping his head out. So let's uh let's go ahead and go over the the uh, the assets for tonight. Let's let's get the squad lead spot in real quick and... So for the US, uh, they get two times AR, two GLs and a medic. Uh, they also have to sort of escort a striker around the uh, outside route. Uh, they also get a logistics trip. They get to set up a firebase tonight, and in that firebase, they get uh, two mortars and two HMGs. So two GLs for the U.S. Uh, it's pretty strong. For the INS, they get two ARs, a LAT, a scout kit, for obviously for the IEDs and the mines, and they also get a medic. They can scrounge for vehicles. So we'll see how they place out. So uh, what the U.S. has to do is they have to clear this red route on this ring here clear it of mines. Uh, usually there's about four mines out there they have to find and then clear. And then uh, they also can set up a fire base in one of those two blue locations there for mortar and HMG support. So the U.S. has a clear route and the INS has to ambush them. Sounds sweet. So I'm just trying to get an overview of here what, uh, what Karma Kit's planning here. It looks like they're going to concentrate mostly in the city area. Which is uh, just a giant kill box. It's a uh, <laughs> it's a mess to get through. It is hard to uh, get through all these compounds if you choose that, and uh, it provides the opera, opera, ample opportunity for the INS to ambush the U.S. in close quarters. Yeah, definitely. What do you what do you think you got going over there on uh, the U.S. J. Remick? Any kind of plans going forward? Uh, nothing just yet. It looks like they're just now getting uh, everybody with their kits situated. Uh, I know that Kami right now is discussing gaming and Brennan. I can't really hear them too well, but I know that they're working out, working it out through squad comp, so I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, All right, looks like Kami has been, has been leading a lot lately, so definitely a, a very experienced leader for the U.S. Looks like Karma Cut's briefing his guys now. This is an INS Benz U.S. patrol operation. U.S.'s job is to patrol that MSR around the right mountain that goes north out of Maine, west of uh, the INS resource supply, comes north to south through district center, and then back east to the U.S. Maine, taking that south road on the uh, on the south side. Now, U.S. assets are as follows: they have one times logi for a firebase that they can play at either one of these locations. 
here or here. They can put up one firebase with mortar support. They also get one time striker. The US objective is to clear the road of the five mines that we will place. We also get IEDs, okay? So US gets a uh, striker and a logi and mortars and standard infantry assets. We get IEDs, mines, and vehicle scrounging, except for the BRDM. We cannot take the BRDM, okay? Our job as INS is to plant our five mines and ensure that they that at least one survives the operation. Um, so we will set up around. We're going to set our IEDs. Here's the here's the idea. We're going to set our IEDs in the center, uh, right here, smack dab in the center of district center on the target. We're going to blow that whole block to bits with five IEDs. Squad will be placed around the ambush mark on their respective marks. Stamp. On their respective mark. Um, so squad one will be on the MG squad. I'm sorry, squad two will be on the MG squad three will be in the rocket squad four will be in the mortar mark. IDs will be placed in the center of town. Mines will be placed along that whole ro road that goes north to south. Scouts will be up on the hills with binox ready to pull the trigger on their IDs as well as relay information. Uh, and then squad one is going to proceed east off of our current pause and hit the mortar base when possible. Okay, so that squad one's job is hit the mortar uh, fire base. But everyone else is setting for an ambush in the center of district. Uh, we're gonna wait until they get to the center. IDs will will detonate. Once IDs detonate. All INS will collapse on, onto the convoy from all sides into a CQB engagement, okay? Obviously, we'll want to hit the striker if possible, but inflict maximum casualties as soon as we feel as though we're either getting uh, mortared or they're taking um, control of the situation. We will bound back out of contact and set for a secondary ambush along, along the route. They can go north or south, so scouts are going to relay that as soon as possible, um, and the secondary ambush point will be set as uh, we find that out. Everyone understand? Uh, yeah. Confirmed. yeah. We got you. Okay. So once again, Sounds let's like nice... go over the plan. Squad 1's pushing east to handle the fire base. Squad 2 is on the uh, MG mark, 3 is on the rocket mark, 4 is on the mortar, mortar mark. All five ADs are going to be placed on that center road where it's really claustrophobic and really close court. All five IDs will be placed. Scouts will go long. Enemy convoy rolls into the uh, into the kill zone. IEDs detonate. As soon as you hear those IEDs detonate, that's two, three, and four. That's your go signal. He's going to push in, surround the convoy, inflict maximum casualties. As soon as you start taking receiving fire and effective fire, bound out. We'll set the secondary ambush. Copy. 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 All right. Copy. 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 Squad, please go ahead uh, and break them up. Those IED marks on the map. What do you think? And we're gonna set for life. Um, I'll, I'll micro the night. Okay, so check. So it sounds like Karma is going to do the same plan he did in the EU session, which I was commanding against him, which is to IED this little choke point here in the, uh, the district center. Uh, I was unfortunately the first one through the choke point and it, it's a mess. It is highly, it's a highly tight space to get through the striker has to move through here and if you don't do a good job clearing it you're going to get ied'd all the way around you uh so we'll see how the u.s contends with this uh tonight and uh sounds like he's going to move his three squads into the district and then one's going to push onto the mortar base so pretty much the same plan just do it again because it worked so well the first time what's going on over there jay remick what's the u.s up to uh, right now, the current uh, squad leaders are discussing their plan. They have yet to tell the rest of the platoon, um, but they are definitely cooking up something good. Uh, I'm going to let him explain it as soon as he brings up the rest of their platoon, do the brief so you guys can listen in. But I'm very excited for this map. Yeah, this night map is... Uh, we play, played two different ops on this one, and both of them are extremely... They're both white knucklers for me. Uh, either squad leading being a squad part of a squad or command. It is this. See, these night ops are crazy. Um, just the sight lines, this the different feel. Um, this is kind of like you know real mission world to do stuff at night because of these conditions. So, we've 
it'll be fun to see what what the uh, how the INS can handle the U.S. plan and which and how this one turns out. I just know that IED choke point is going to be a mess if they get to it. So. Did you, uh, Jamie, were you in the EU session earlier today? Yes, I did have the honor of being in, in the EU session earlier today. Uh, though I did have to leave early, I can tell you right now that I, I had a suicide mission earlier today. I was basically a scout out for uh, the insurgents, and I, trust me, I was the first one to die. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Carver's anxiety. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And then how he wants them. Yeah, yeah it looks like the, the Americans about to debrief right now. Awesome. Welcome everyone, welcome. Let's wait until everybody's here. Sabari had to I go. Have blueberries over here. Is that... What? Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna listen in on the US platoon brief and see what they got cooked up. Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to Operation Silent Vigil. Today we're going to be tasked with uh, clearing enemy mines from the roads here. Uh, here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to have Squad 1, Quirkly Squad, heading up north uh, towards this compound. He's going to be taking you guys through the hills, looking for mines on the roads, clearing any contacts. Everybody else is going to be moving south uh, down the road towards our mortar pit. Uh, we will be getting one lodgy run, and we will be setting up mortars in the uh, city area over there. Once we get down there, or once Shadow Squad, so uh, Shadow Squad's going to be running the mortars. Uh, Brennan Squad is going to be hoofing it through the uh, mountains directly north of them, near the sniper mark, uh, to cut off any enemies coming from that uh, cache down there. Uh, finally, uh, Hamlet Squad, Squad 4, they are going to be in charge of the vehicles. Uh, they will move, be moving uh, behind Brennan as a heavy support squad, uh, giving them support and bringing the vehicle along the southern road to help with the uh, murder pit. Essentially, we're just going to be looking for mines and then pretty much running into immediate contact, most likely. So uh, watch out for mines, IEDs, pretty much anything. So they may even have some technicals. Any Any questions? Do the uh, what? vehicles not have to stay on the road anymore? Uh, no, they do have to stay on the road, I believe. The technicals do not, however. Correct. I call it 147. Uh, what, is our, uh, what road are we taking? The, the road that goes um, At the moment, the fallback point is going to be the mortar pit, D4K2. Because we will, be, we will hopefully maybe even have a couple heavy machine guns there, depending on points. We'll see. Uh, other than that, we are ready to go here in uh, just a couple minutes. 44 seconds. There are 44 seconds. I just, uh, let's, uh, let's I marked the, the route. And, it's uh, on the, the, the dock as well. Copy that. Thank you for the route. So the U.S. brief is over. It looks like we're going to be going live here real quick. Uh, just looking at some of the uh, chat going on on Twitch. Yes, they can use both mines and IADs. It's it's actually they go kind of hand in hand. You can set the mine in the middle of the road and use the IED to uh, possibly uh, set some place on the side of the road so that the uh, infantry, when they look for cover, they can go ahead and get hit by the IED. But uh, yeah, they get both. They get five of each. So you're going to see a lot of explosions tonight if the uh, scouts can survive. Sounds like Karma Cut's going to try to hide them in the hills so they have good eyes on where they planted and then command them when to blow them. So we're live. Let's see what happens here. Got, uh, looks like we got uh, Google Trex's squad over here. They're pushing out the east real quick, probably to get uh, this elevation here to overlook the US advance to see what direction they're heading. All right, we're live. All right, guys, keep it in local as much as possible because there is going to be a lot of command chatter. Okay. Yep. What's, the, what's going on on the U.S. side there over there, Jay Remick? What's uh, What are they doing? Uh, it looks like right now the U.S. is actually going to 
from what it looks like based off the map, it looks like they were going to have squads 2, 3, and 5 push down the southern flank, just above the uh, northern route. Uh, I believe they're going to get set up to on top of the mountains, while one uh, also proceeds to the north, near the northern uh, route as well. So in general, it looks like they're about to set a line. I know that they did discuss, I overheard them talking, that it was a dangerous move, but you know, hopefully they have great eyes and they keep an eye on them and spot them out fairly quickly before they see them, before the uh, insurgency of the U.S. It looks like we're going to have contact here pretty soon. They're about uh, 300 meters from each other. Uh, looks like we've got uh, Google Tricks and uh, it's about to crest here on uh, Legit Gamer and Gaming Brandon. Yeah, you can only imagine like what the, what's going on in the insurgent's mind. Like, how close are the U.S.? Because they are fairly close from the start uh, to the U to the U.S. team. Oh, and oh yeah, there's first gone. Yep. Gaining Brennan took out Hanson. Oh man, there he goes. Oh, and Google Trek goes down. Oh, and we got Darman going down. Man, that was fairly oh, fast. This, yeah, this first squad is not doing well. They just lost that. Uh, it's crispy. They just lost. Oh boy, they only had three members left in this first squad. Well, if this is just the game plan. The yeah, they they US did pretty well. Great job. I don't know if that this was the game plan. We were, yeah, this is just what we were talking about. It's just about who can get eyes on who first, and it looks like the U.S. managed to get the uh, insurgents as they were cresting. That's great, 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 great vision from the U.S. Team. Yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, I don't know if that was the game plan for Karma to have his squad go over there and get wiped or what, but uh, that's, that's essentially what just happened. Uh, they're gonna have to huh. fall back and get with the uh, the rest of the platoon back here in the district center. But uh, now the U.S. owns the elevation over there. They're gonna have eyes into the city, so advantage to them, I guess. Yeah, and definitely it could be advantage and disadvantage for the U.S. because now the INS know where the U.S. are coming from. At least it one looks spot like, of the U.S. Absolutely. It kind of looks like the U.S. has picked that southern uh, spot for their fire base, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as they get set up along here, it looks like the other squads to the north as well are looking to get set up. Not sure exactly what their game plan is from the northern section, but I do know that once they get set here, they are going to be pushing towards the south part. Well, it looks, it looks like the INS is kind of laid off. They're back in the city hiding, so it looks like most of the contacts are going to take place in the city here. Um, they're definitely not going to be moving around too much. They're definitely going to be waiting for the Americans to come down and hopefully uh, lure them into this trap they've set in the middle here where this choke point is. Yeah, the number one thing I'm here overhearing from uh, from the U.S. side is definitely trying to get vision on the uh, routes. So for those of you that also haven't uh, known as well, the, the, the other word or terminology for the routes here is also called the MSR. It's a main service road. Something you may hear a lot from these squad leaders or you know from command. They'll say, oh, northern MSR, down the southern MSR. So if you ever wonder what MSR means, it is definitely a uh, mixed service road for all you kiddies out there. Got some questions in uh, Twitch chat too about delay. Yeah, there's no delay other than whatever uh, Twitch gives us. Uh, we play by the honor system here. We don't believe that anybody's going to be stream sniping. Uh, most of these guys are here for the immersion, the, uh, the fun of it. There's really no competition. It's just about getting in here, getting tactical and having a good time. Uh, it looks like here we're getting some, it looks like from, from uh, the U.S. point of view, the insurgents got great eyes of uh, Hamlet's squad coming down the MSR, coming down the hill. Um, and if they haven't spotted the insurgents yet, that's command they're looking at. We got Karma Cut over here on the mountain side, as well as Redcoat assisting him. So I don't know if they see the U.S., but... Well, one would think that the INS would want to lay low in the city here because uh, the elevation there for the U.S. is pretty dangerous for them. They can just peek down into the compounds and pick them off as they move around. Yeah. 
have to scout for us. Basically, be our meat shield. Alright, do you want one? You know what? I don't know if Karmakut can see them. Uh, Karmakut doesn't have vision on that nor on that uh, southern Nassar, southern road. And definitely the U.S. are starting to slowly milk their way down the MSR. You can peek over this rock, but I don't think Redcoat or Karma Cut have eyes on that MSR. So if they don't see them coming, they could be in big trouble. Yeah, nothing in command comms over here about any kind of contact. Yeah, the U.S. are definitely starting to work their way down, but they need to go quick. If they get spotted, and they can definitely be in a lot of trouble. Gunner, Looks like right now, just, Gunner, just keep we've got about two different squads. We've one, one and one and a half squads coming down the MSR. Yeah, I, I think Redcoat might be getting some kind of vision on them if you could see through this darkness. Currently, right now, I turned my gamma up so you're able to see through the darkness, but uh, for the players, they should have it at a default setting of, I believe, 2.2 or 2.0, which is a lot darker than what you see right now on my screen. Or you can see from my screen. Alright, it sounds like... Uh... Karma Cut just heard the striker and it's got a visual on it now, so they kind of know the direction they're approaching. But they don't have any IEDs or mines down this section, so don't know what the, the game plan here is. Nope. There's the U.S. There's about three of the U.S. that are coming down. Who is that? We have Racine, Goobzer, and Murka. They are down, and they came down undetected. Hopefully they can keep that, keep that going for them. Over here clearing the compounds, and they are just below Redcoats and Karma's Millers. Which, from their hill, from their perspective, you can't see anything at all. So they are completely, those three from the U.S. are completely hidden. Yeah, I just heard Karma, Karma Cut uh, tell his guys to get inside, hold still, and wait for them to come. So it looks like they're trying to set this ambush here. Could be a two-sided thing. I'm not sure if they get vision or if they got vision on the other side from the INS from the north, or the central part of the city. They have eyes on them, but if they don't see them, definitely going to be bad for the INS. Do you hear anything over there regarding U.S. sightings to the south? Yeah, I mean, Karma Cut, uh, Karma Cut sees them on the south. He's, here's the striker. He sees it. He sees the visual of the guys coming down the road. So... But they're, everybody's laying kind of quiet right now. We're good to move up if we can. Gotcha. Striker. Squad. My squad's ready to push the hill when uh, commanded to. It doesn't look like the INS has picked up any vehicles either. They had the ability to scratch up any vehicle they wanted on the map except for the BDRM. But they didn't pick any of that up. So they're just relying on their mines and the IEDs to uh, take out the bulk of the U.S. infantry here. But it doesn't look like the U.S. has committed that much to the actual clearing operation. They've got what looks like almost two full squads in the hill plus a third squad in the back there for reserve. And then, of course, the, uh, the squad for their mortars. So... So far, it looks like the U.S. is doing a fairly good job, but they haven't reached the uh, any mines yet. They haven't had a, had a stop to do any clearance, and they're walking. They're starting to get close to the uh, the point here in which uh, they'll set ambush for them. So we'll see what happens and transpires and how it turns out for them after that. Yeah, I might on that. You know, definitely looking at where all these other squads are set. Uh, besides the fire base, it looks like the other two squads, and this is, you know, just from observation, it looks like they could be a QRF a based on what contact uh, the first squad that's moving in would be getting. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Google, your squad walked right up in another squad. It was just a bad timing. Oh, yeah, definitely. We should check these buildings on our right, right? This is the <laughs> I'm just going to walk and crouch. Dibs on the stuff. Like you're on crazy Russian right now. I have quite a few cameras tonight to give you that sort of point of view of the, uh, the boots on the ground. Sure. Let's, uh, let's go over those cameras real quick. They got Shadow Ritual. Silver Man's another one. Anything yet? It's crispy. 
uh, Google Google tricks, but he's not providing much of a view on the ground anymore. Okay, please. We're waiting for them. Yeah. Keep uh, big S, you're on him right now. A crazy Russian. And Mighty is the last camera for tonight. I'd like to put a shout out to those guys for streaming and making this uh, these events and this this uh, stream what they are. Gives it different points of views for you guys watching. You can watch from the up in the sky and you can watch on the ground. Yeah, it's definitely great having all these different points of view. Shout out to those guys for stepping up and being able to commit to I'm definitely contributing to squad ups more than just playing. <laughs> It looks like the U.S. may be approaching the uh, first mine here, or is it an IED? I can't tell. And they have to be very careful as well if they continue to proceed like this. A big thing that uh, we teach you with squad ops is definitely the nade spacing. And uh, <laughs> this example right here in this ditch, it's a uh, not so great nade spacing. But it's okay. They haven't touched contact yet. They don't know that they're very, very close to the INS. Let's just hope they can proceed without any less, yeah. any loss of casualty. Well, it sounds like INS command just called them out. So they know that they're at that intersection there when they're approaching that mine. So we'll see what uh, transpires now. But yeah, that spacing was pretty bad there for a minute. That was a tasty uh, grenade surprise. Got to give it to the U.S. though. They're doing a great job of, you know, going through these buildings very fairly uh, quick, quickly, and uh, you know, making sure that it's it's safe to proceed forward. Because when they reach contact, they better be ready. Copy. Uh, yeah, that, the U.S. plan here is pretty pretty good because uh, they're limiting the the element in which they're going to have in contact. While they have other, uh, they have like two, maybe three other full squads on the outside for to maneuver. So. When this first element comes under contact, at least they have the maneuverability to get around and suppress and help out the squad in contact, right. which is should, right. should help and, them and until the least right. choke point. Can you guys move up the road north? Yeah, and definitely compared to the first uh, couple of minutes of the game, it's definitely a, a, a twist. Yeah. You, know, you know, the tables are turned. Yeah. At first, you know, the Drive insurgents are waiting for the U.S. and they're expecting them, but now they know where they're coming from. They can see them. They have eyes on them. Now it's the U.S. that... You know, they, the U.S. has to try and figure out where they're at. They're in the unknown right now. They don't know where they are. Yeah, they'll just still prepare for fire mission, and they'll give the boring job right now. But it's going to um, go to hell if shit any second. Knowing Karma, he grouped all of his mortars or mines and stuff together for a big explosion. All right. That's what we're going to do. Do they... Looks like the striker is getting close to that mine. Uh, do they do they have eyes on it, or are they going to be able to clear it? I'm trying to get visual on it right now. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see in the dark, right? Yeah. yeah Meanwhile, it looks like getting, they... this uh, darkness is definitely a challenge because I have my gamma turned up, so you're able to see uh, a lot more. We got a, got a almost a full squad coming into the north of uh, district center with the uh, looks like commands down here too. Hopefully to help the guys out when they get through the intersection. Uh, this is, seems to be collapsing onto the town from both the south and the north now, Keep, while keeping another squad in reserve. We're just uh, we're on crazy Russian right now. He's part of that uh, northern squad that's pushing into those compounds with the command. Well, for the U.S., it looks like the northern squads are are finally pushing in. That. That's, I want you I'm watching sure if they're in the city, this though. south, all right, towards oh, south southwest. The U.S. seems pretty tentative about moving up here. I don't know what the plan is, but that, that mine is... Yeah. Uh, 
I don't. I can't. It looks really like I can hear in a local comms right now with the uh, striker. It sounds like they got eyes on a possible ID or a mine at the end of the intersection. Yeah. It looks like that the U.S. has spotted that explosive. It isn't confirmed exactly what it is just yet, but they do see an explosive on the side of the road. U.S. doing a great job being cautious of proceeding forward. They know that, you know, they know they're getting close to being contacted. They don't know exactly where they are, but they know that they're close. They have to be close because they spotted, uh, and they spotted an explosive on the side of the road. Oh, wait, I think I've shot something north. Let's go check it out real quick. Was it a good shot? Yeah, they're getting really close to it now. It uh, looks like the INS has set up a little kill box for them. Yeah, it looks like they took a shot. And they did take contact to the north. Let's come back over here to the south. Let's strike. Yeah, it looks like right. See what goes down here by the striker. Like they've got one guy crawling up to where the mine is. Yeah, definitely. He could definitely see the mine. Now, the real question is, do the insurgents have any eyes on that mine, or do they just have audio of him shoveling? Oh, whoever saw that. Because we got some insurgents in the compound. That's all right. Got oh. one U.S. down. Yeah, big U.S. didn't see that guy at all. Oh, Ooh. and there goes Merkel Crab. Oh, and down goes Hamley. That was a squad leader there. So usually when squad leaders do go down, they pass it to uh, one IC, two IC, which is also uh, acronym for first in charge, second in charge. So given that Hamlet went down, Hamley went down, you should be passing it to someone else as a squad lead so they can retain that communication with the rest of the man. Oh, it looks like they cleared, they cleared that first mine and... Uh... They're moving forward here, but uh, the U.S. just traded uh, three of their soldiers for one, so they're yeah, starting to take casualties to getting the city here. Meanwhile, the U.S. is pushing uh, pushing further into the district center from the north. They're now almost north of a gas station area, and the second squad is now starting to approach the outs outskirts of uh, northern D.C. here. Oh, there goes the mortar shot. 20 seconds to splash. One, you're gonna keep Mortars going off. Let's just see where they're going to land out here. North hills cleared. They just shot now one for marking. Are, and figure out where exactly that mortar lands so they can get an adjustment of where they need that mortar to be. Oh, and it was just in between the two insurgent squads. I've got eyes on. Fireteam 1A is moving. That was good range. Just southwest of me in the compound. That was good range. The compound southwest um, of me. Stand by for uh, more rounds. We gotta be really, uh, don't reload ever because we have no ticker. Alright, we're in position. Do you want us going further south? Yes, sir. Uh, after... Shadow's probably adjusting those mortars right now. I don't know what they were. They're trying to uh, suppress with those mortars, but I'm, I assume they think that this turn's gonna be a dead, dead kill box for them. They're gonna probably suppress the buildings to the north side or to the east here and... Hopefully, be able to move some infantry up under the cover of the mortars. Mean, meanwhile, this squad in the north here has pushed all the way into the center of the uh, district, while another squad further to the north is almost, uh, you know, they come down off the hill. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be a nail and a hammer kind of tactic. We got the squads to the north coming into the city, and obviously the squads and the strike to the south coming in. And it looks like they're going to try and sandwich and figure out what other contact in it is in the city and clear it out. So far, the insurgents are doing a great job as well, just holding tight.
Oh, one insurgent down. That northern squad is pushing deeper and deeper in. They're starting to uh, get contact with the INS here. They're not watching the direction of this U.S. team moving in. Best Pony's about to get walked up on here pretty soon. And the big thing for the U.S. too is they're doing a great job of checking each corner, you know, making sure that they're, you know, cutting the pie, for those of you that know. Cutting the pie, clearing rooms, making sure they're checking each crevice of each compound and making sure it's clear and safe to move on. Because you definitely don't want to rush in situations like this, otherwise, you know, it could be your last decision. Oh, Magnus just went down. from Rocky. I'm not sure exactly who went down, but Rocky managed to take somebody out as well as get yeah, some damage. He, yeah, he uh, he went down. Uh, Magnus went down. He was the one that was holding down that corner there. One. Yep, Rocky definitely getting some medical attention. Uh, mountain is clear. Enemy contact must have disappeared. Uh, we're Looks like they're clearing this mine at the bend of the road. The U.S. is just making a surgical movement up this road, clearing mines as they go. And these, these guys with the shovels out have absolutely nothing but them, their cells and the shovels sitting in the middle of a road. Well, they've got a full squad to their north now supporting them. It looks like this kill box has is, is just gone away. So, so far, I think that the U.S. have cleared uh, two of the five mines. Uh, once they clear all five, they can go ahead and exfil back to their firebase following the route. So they're making pretty good progresses. Ooh, yeah, Mighty's taking contact right now. He's got that scout kit, so hopefully he doesn't die. He, he's he got the trigger, so that'll be one less IED for this kill box that Karma set up here in the middle of District Center. They're, they're, they're pursuing me. Yeah, he's got like a... Me. Oh, sorry about that. It still just amazes me how patient these insurgents are in this city as well. Like, they definitely know the U.S. is there, but they don't know when, where they're coming from, which direction. You can see they're all just sitting still and just waiting patiently, and that takes a lot of discipline. So, yeah. big shout out to these guys for holding it tight. Oh, here goes an IED, it sounds like. Let's watch and see what happens. Oh. oh, and down goes Stray Dog and Legit Gamer from that IED. That was a great IED explosion. That's only one of a few that they've got stacked up in there. In the road. Guys, uh, run out. If they've got eyes on us, they're somewhere around here. So far, it looks like a pretty close one. The uh, insurgents have a few more deaths than the U.S. I'll take close contact. Rocky insert inserting into this compound. And uh, he might be running the pony or Kermit. Oh. oh, and they haven't fully cleared it, so they did not fully clear this compound. Oh. Well, the striker's slowly. Yeah, the striker's slowly moving up to this uh, little uh, kill box that he spilt here. Oh, here we go again. Rocky and Merrick are clearing another compound. Oh. With three insurgents in the room. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Command just went down, and the striker is on fire. So oh, the Americans managed to take two of the three contacts out. Krusty the Sailor is probably fearing that's for his fine. life. They probably think that that's all of them left in that compound. So let's see if they fully clear it out. America, oh, American preps has been made. Yo, the striker's down. Oh, so that's like... 
Well, the INS oh, is definitely in their hat now. <laughs> So yeah, the two insurgents managed to clear that small room. How many do we lose off the border? And we clear out three insurgents. We come back over here to Pony. And current it. Can it? Looks like little Jin's gonna come behind Pony. Oh, and down goes Pony. Good shot by little Jin. Oh, and little Jin goes down by Sightless. Sightless takes out the gaming running and little Jin. There are definitely a lot of trades going on right now throughout the city. It's a great, great engagement. They're doing what they can, putting out compounds, and it's great trades from both sides right now. This is the down and dirty of this clear here now. They're in the cities. they got to check all these corners. See, and this is where communication is key with every squad, making sure you know they've covered the correct buildings and they're not double-checking each one, making sure they're... Thoroughly getting through everything, and you're checking in with your squad mates. Yeah. Uh, okay. So three, you've got a contact just got south of you across the street. East of you. And the great thing too between the squad leaders right now, I'm hearing through the command comms, is that the squad leaders are looking out for each other, letting them know that they see contacts near each other. It's great communication. You've got contacts just south of you. Yeah. It sounds like the INS are going to try to pull out of the city and regroup and try another ambush. Right now, the uh, INS is, uh, there's 17, well, 17 deaths, that is. Oh, America takes down Matrix. But make that 20 now, the lion, INS has lost 20 to the U.S. is 12. Oh, wow. America patching himself up. Oh, and those mortars coming in. From that fire base, that's that freak loose it out. Lucy wants to get so far away from that mortar round because that was pretty close. Yeah, he may actually. Meters, and I'm pretty sure America heard that. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm pretty sure America heard that movement. Lucid coming in the same compound as America, but can he see him? Oh, here we go, Lucid coming in close to America. But does, America has probably no idea. Oh, yeah, definitely. Lucid takes out America. Great shot from clearing by, Mer by Lucid. So this uh, INS pullback, they're actually going to start running into the squads moving into the north here. Oh, first contact. Oh, Carpy goes down. These three INS out here are about to run into another full American squad out to the north. This, uh, these two squads they head to the north are just collapsing and, and choking off the INS retreat out of the city now. Evan, uh, Evan may be able to peek Jack Reynolds here pretty soon. Oh, for Mother Texas might be able to see him coming up here. Oh, and do down, Jack Reynolds. Yeah, it looks like the insurgents are trying to counter that fire base. We've got a uh, common cut and red coat. Trying to see if they can clear those mortars. I really don't want to smoke. I really don't want to smoke for them. Linus. Kamakut. Looks like Kamakut and Redcoat are slowly working their way to that compound to see if they can take out those mortars. They have no idea. Yeah, Raj. Come on, you. I just keep saying we're fine. We got this. We got this. Those are probably the best times to make any moves. Or, oh, Karma throws a nade, Redcoat throws a nade. Oh, one nade out. Oh, they know now. They know. They're in trouble. The element of surprise has been broken. Fluffy and Schnapps now know that there are insurgents close and they are coming after the heat. Actually, we're swinging around the north. Zed, we're swinging around this north. Fall off the mortars, yeah. Fall off the mortars and get them, and, uh... Great moves right here by Karmacut and Redcoat. Definitely throwing the grenades to get... Oh. We've got contacts... 
Oh, you down goes combo cut. Turtle guy five takes out combo cut. Great coverage by Turtle guy five. Definitely watching the entrances to the compound and making sure they don't get outflanked or you know outmaneuvered. Now it's all up to Red Cliff. Mortar pit is taking a fire, so we're gonna break off. Right and Shadow Squad just went ahead and radioed that to the rest of the squad leaders that they're taking contact. See, the key here too is to also make two two uh, two members seem like twenty. Definitely, that was I think that was a tactic that Karma and Redcoat were going for when they threw that nade at the first entrance and went around to the side. It was just great coverage by Turtle Guy Five to cover that entrance. So you got to imagine what's going on through the Americans' mind. Like, how many are out there? Is it just that one guy? Is there yeah, another one? Be a lot of things probably going on through their mind right now, but they're definitely keeping eyes out, making sure that they're getting security. Right. Looks like we got Zed through the kill hole, trying to take a peek and see if there's anybody outside. Didn't see anybody. So we're moving on, trying to see if uh, there's any other insurgents outside in this compound. Yep, we're going slow. And the key thing here too is to take everything slow. Definitely don't want to rush. But I tell you, this, these Americans have got this compound on the lock. Well, the uh, the U.S. is kind of boxed in the insurgents here in D.C. They uh, they're trying to set up an ambush for one of the mines on the MSR, but the U.S. is picking them apart here in the uh, the close quarters Ooh. that as they're and trying down to retreat. goes Redcoat. Zed went ahead and came around to the MSR and saw Redcoat. A good about 50, 75 meters and took him out. Great shot by Zed. So now the fire base no longer has any threats. What do you got going on over there? About five meters from racing right now. Uh, the the U.S. is is slowly clearing out the uh, district center still. Unless it was just one, it might have been a long. The uh, the blue guys on the uh, on my screen right now are the INS. They've they're trying to get out of this town, but the U.S. keep cutting them off at every exit they take. One for one trades and nades going everywhere. Uh, looks like they're trying to set up an ambush for one of the vehicles leading out of town. So we'll see if they can accomplish that. But the U.S. still has to clear the, clear these roads. Yeah, for the most part on my side, it looks like the U.S. did a great job of, you know, clearing the rest of these compounds and making sure it's safe to move up. Compared to the EU event, this this map is definitely, or this, uh, this session is definitely going a lot quicker. Three, this is one. We're going to bound across the road to get to, uh, directly to your north. Roger that. Let me know when you start the building. Solid copy. You know, one of the great things I love about Squad is definitely the aspect of, of communication and teamwork. I feel like that's definitely something unique that this game has brought to the right, gaming scene the context, as far as first-person shooters. It's, it's really a great them. change of pace and uh, it's really a good thing to contribute to the gaming I'll community. Do it myself, but... that shit. Uh, three, my guys are going to be bounding here very shortly. Absolutely. The slower pace of this, uh, the, the immersive yeah, that. and, and just the, the tactical position. way that uh, we go about the ops, it's, uh, it makes it really unique. I know that uh, the slower pace, I really enjoy being a little bit more tactical than the uh, kind of the twitchy gameplay of some of the first person shooters that are out there now. Just being able to feel like, you know, and the One Life event just adds a whole another layer to that. Just being able to feel like, hey, this is it. And then if I die, I'm gone. That's it. I get to watch, but I don't get to play anymore. Yeah, according to him, Hamlet went AFK right after his death. Forgot to transfer it. So I don't know if he's fire team leader or not. For now, he's there. It looks like the U.S. is starting to freely move a lot quicker or they're starting to move a lot quicker than they were before i uh, feel like they're getting a lot more confidence that they've cleared most of the city out as they proceed forward but definitely uh, the numbers are starting to show now there's still two mines here though in the city that they need to check but uh you know with the game plan now the command is down i don't know if there's they're still talking over there it's still command any kind of communication going on as far as what they're going to plan on doing I know for the INS side, it's died off. Yeah, let's clear the road, keep, let's keep moving north. 
Yeah, I'm hearing now that from Shadow Virtual that they're definitely going to continue pushing and clearing these roads. Continuing on with the objective and see how the INS react to it. Looks like they're going to try to set another ambush as they leave the uh, the city part. Uh, starting to move into different positions now to hopefully hamper them down while they're on the road. But the U.S. has been real efficient so far as to avoiding those kind of kill boxes by only uh, sending one or two guys up in advance, kind of limiting their contact. And once they do establish contact, having another element sweep around. So. Yeah, it looks like the U.S. are digging up this la this landmine, and the insurgents have no idea. Insurgents have no idea if they're looking for the U.S. It looks like we're coming down as far as the time limit on the match. About 10 minutes or less, and if uh, you know, if we can get these objectives set and these right lines are dug up, then uh, sure. it'll be a mission of success for you guys. And there may have been a line because IEDs. Well, the insurgents look like they're spreading out a little bit. They're going to try to ambush them to see if they come through. The U.S. doesn't know that, but that was the last mine they just cleared. So the insurgents know that, and they're going to try to set up an ambush and get them as they're getting out of town. Looking here over at the uh, Twitch chat, yes, definitely the adrenaline when playing this game is definitely addicting. This is what kept me going with squad. Oh, wait. We're in contact right now between the U.S. and the insurgents down the NSR. Yeah, they, they've set up this little ambush here, but it looks like the U.S. walked right into it before they had time to set it. Uh, yeah, it looks like we lost SM Pure Paradise right in the middle of the road. Some GLs going off. Yeah, the INS is just getting hammered from all angles. We just lost two guys to different GLs. When I when I read the pre-op brief on this and the U.S. got two GLs, it was I knew that it was going to be one of those matches where if you're out in the open, you're going to get GL'd. So, definitely. Stand by. Mortars it's been a on your great doors. aid to the U.S. to this U.S. squad over here. They've definitely done some damage over to the INS. Got them scared and pushing into that compound rather than staying in the open. Oh, and now we're hearing shots from the fire base. Let's see yeah. where there's more, more around them. They're going to zero in on this compound, hopefully, and the INS is not going to have anything to do but leave. Getting all kinds of contact yeah, also, all over the place now. We're also getting contact. It looks like scary Jews coming in flank. There's more around. They're finally coming in, and they're a little too far. Hopefully, they can get that communicated and adjusted. But if we come over here, we have scary Jews coming up behind. Uh, Rocky you and who is that? Skin? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yep. Moving slowly. I don't think the U.S. knows that scared you is there. Yeah, there's only five oh, wait, wait. left now. I'm just hearing in local chat, Spine knows that there's someone on the other side of the wall. It looks like Rocky's going to go and react and figure out where that INS soldier is. But here it is again, man. Great communication by the U.S. They're you checking the entrance. Over where Rocky's coming in. Let's see who can win this trade. Oh, here we go. Two on one, the distraction, and then climb to finish. Very nice teamwork. Great teamwork. Definitely sure, where a two-on-one uh, tactic worked out well. You get one right to distract and engage. We'll see if the U.S. can do the same thing over here. We've got three INS held up in this building in this compound. They know they're in here. They just took down one of their buddies. Normal Plast is kind of backing off, and he's only got one buddy with him right now. Nobody on that south door.
you can hear the INS right now, they're talking amongst themselves, making sure everything's covered. There's one pushing. Oh, he's RPGing that door. It looks like we have a one INS soldier to the uh, to the west, sightless. Yep, it's like a rocky and spine are completely just passing him. They're just going completely oh, different directions. So it doesn't look like they're going to be sightless. Is going to be taking any contact. He's just trying to clear out the compound where his buddy died. Trying to figure out if there's still any more U.S. soldiers this direction. And once he realizes that, I'm pretty sure he'll fall back. Well, Nathan just went down over here, so I think that's the last INS there is sightless. Looks like we got one last INS soldier. You can only imagine how scared you might be. No comms, no command, no one to talk to. Just trying to figure out what he has to do now. If, if I'm mistaken, are all the mines down? Nope, they're all gone. But the U.S. doesn't know that unless they, they kept count. But uh, that uh, team up to the north there that just got uh, Nathan, it's gonna, it looks like they're going to continue pushing up the road while they chase down this other guy. Oh, actually, it looks like U.S. missed one mine. Oh, they did. So they haven't cleared all of the MSR. You think uh, it shows on your map over there, Expert? Yeah. You can get it. Yeah, it's on the southern part of town. I don't know how they missed it in the first place. I would think the striker would have rolled right over this one. It looks like Sightless is actually going to the last location of the mine. Smart move. Definitely scary, though, being by yourself. But, hey, I've seen a match. I think it was Operation Foxheart by one of, uh, one of our regulars, Tedish, or, sorry, one of our members, staff members, Tedish, took out 13 people. You got to give him a mad shout-out to Shadow of Visual. Is he, is he on this? I, I got an aid. I got an aid. Back up. All the way, all the way, all the way. All right, all right. Standard being back. Well, I got him. We're missing someone from Alpha. Oh, it could I be took mistaken. The... Hey, from hiding underneath the the fucking <laughs> table. <laughs> I did not even see him. All right, let's go. Oh, never mind. I guess there was another INS soldier. Now it's yeah. that list that's all by himself. Hey, get off the road. They still might have an ID. Mine. So as you can see, we've got the mine over here to the, I believe it's the eastern part of the MSR, hidden just below the rock. Oh, and we're getting a broadcast mission for Karma Cut. They've missed two mines. So the U.S. have done a great job of clearing compounds, but they definitely didn't do a great job, not so good job, at uh, clearing the MSR of all the mines. I think they're on the one that they think they missed right now. They're digging that one up. The one down to the south, though, is still here. It's uh, hidden right next to this rock. I'm surprised the striker didn't trip over that one. That site list is going to sit here and wait for them. Running out of time, so hopefully the U.S. can accomplish the mission and get all the mines. Yep, they've got less than three minutes to find this last mine. We got Sightless hiding out in the compound just to the west of it. Pretty sure if you can't get direct visual on it, you can get uh, you can get audio on who's shoveling the mine and hopefully take them out. I think that's personally that's what I would do. Find a nice corner to hide out in, just get good get within good range so you can hear the audio of the of the enemy soldier digging up the mine. And as soon as they're busy digging up the mine, that's when you take them out. Oh yeah, definitely. Because if they're smart, they only send maybe one guy at a time to get the mine. It looks like we've got four or five. Nope. Yes, five guys pushing down to this mine location now. It's definitely coming to Let's, the wire. If they can get this undug, we'll see how this plays out. Play it out. Looks like they've missed it and walked right past it again. Uh, man, not looking so great for the U.S. for them to miss that last mine. Look at all of them just walking right past it. But you can definitely tell. You can definitely tell that uh, Sightless knows that they're around him. 
They've looked around the MSR again. The U.S. have looked around the MSR again. They've completely missed it again. Poor guys. They did a great job throughout this whole match. They're, they're just blind to this mine. It looks Not like Karma Cuts. Throw... Looks like he's giving them hints giving now them as hints. to where the mine is. <laughs> so Fluffy Llama and Schnapps with 30, so about 30 plus or minus seconds. My immersion is ruined. Oh, they found it. Who is he saying warmer? They found it. Oh, wait, nope, nope. Oh. Nope, they passed it again. They keep walking right past it. It's in this the shadow hilarious. of this rock. Oh, and here we go. Silas takes out the American soldier. Who is that? Taking out Snap. Silas pulling back. Fluffy Llama. Fluffy Llama scared for his life. He knows that an insurgent soldier is inside that compound. Oh! Aww. And the insurgents win! By default, insurgents win because the U.S. Aww. failed to clear the MSR of all the mines. Even with the hint. They were doing such a good job, too. Picking picking them up, digging them, moving up, but they missed that one. Uh, that one not, mine. Uh, they did a great uh, job. Uh, Both teams did an amazing job. Yeah, this was an excellent round. It, it played out really well. Uh, the U.S. had a good flanking maneuver to the north. The INS hardened up. They uh, set a good ambush. Got to see the you know the striker got destroyed. A lot of good explosions. Good fun all around for everybody. <laughs> well, that's the uh, end of round uh, one. For Google Trek says in our in our Twitch chat, you you could say they rocked right past it. Nice. <laughs> right. Well, it looks like we're gonna get set up for round two. Uh, Stick around. We'll see how Karma Cut handles his mind clearing while Dr. Kamikaze sets up his INS uh, ambushes for the uh, route clearance mission that the U.S. has to perform. So, what did you think, Jay Remick? You think uh, you think uh, the U.S. has got an advantage now that, that uh, Karma Cut's going to command the U.S. in the route mission, or do you think the INS is going to have the advantage this time around? It's really hard to say. I mean, it's definitely it definitely is going to be a change of pace given the change of, change of command and the change of sides. It really just depends on how it plays out. But based off of this mission, you know, it can really tell you that anything goes. You can tell that, you know, the insurgent forces lost a lot of people and it came down to one person. And the U.S., you know, as great of a job as they did, you know, clearing the compounds and clearing out all the enemies, you know, it's really important to, to also keep the objectives in mind as well. And, you know, at first it looked like the insurgents were going to lose just by, you know, getting eliminated, but the US, they, they managed to turn it around and win it for the insurgent forces. Yes, Thunder Skull, you could say they were sightless of the mine. <laughs> oh my god, the puns. <laughs> you guys are so punny. All right, it looks like we're going to have a guest joining us pretty soon here. So for you guys who are just stumbling upon this, this is Squad Ops. Uh, we're a community that run One Life events in the game of Squad. Everybody here is come come here to enjoy the immersion, the tactical uh, gameplay that we put on. Uh, we run these events every Wednesday night and twice on Saturdays. And these guys all come in, they join random squads. Uh, we have pre-made squad leaders and command set up and uh, Every Wednesday and Saturday, we have different operations that they all can participate in. They all have different objectives. We might have a rescue mission once, uh, attack and defend, or like this one, a route clearance or patrol. So lots of variety, a lot of fun for everybody to uh, join in. If you're interested, visit us at squadops.gg. Yeah, it's definitely a great team. It's definitely a great change of pace. Uh, me personally, I've been an FPS shooter for a pretty long time now, and I've, I've got to stay. I've loved joining the squad ops community. Definitely, if you're looking for a more, not necessarily serious gameplay, because we do have a lot of fun along the way. Definitely in between the missions, we just have a lot of fun with this, this uh, change of pace in this gameplay. So it sounds like we got Mighty on board. How you doing, Mighty? I died, so, you know, about normal. 
<laughs> it's a pretty good round, though. It's actually yeah, not the way I expected that to go. Yeah, I figured after the EU session, when I walked into Karma's Cut's uh, kill box there, that that would have been the same scenario, but it didn't look like it turned out all that bad for the US this time. Yeah, I, I really thought this was going to go a whole other way because there's so many mines on that road, but they actually did. I mean, when they dug the first one up, I was like, oh, sh I was like, oh no, they're actually playing the game well. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. Yeah, that was pretty hey. good. We saw that squad chasing you off the hill there. That was that was pretty crazy. Oh my, uh, oh my gosh! That was I couldn't see. I don't know if Penn switched to my view at all, but it was literally like uh, like when you were a kid and you were playing Pirate Captain and you held the 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 uh, toilet uh, toilet paper cardboard tube up to your eye. That's all I could see. It was like that little, <laughs> and I was like running for a medic. I was like, someone give please give me a medic. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't let the trigger man die. I know. Worked out, though. Before first contact, if you remember, um, just before you guys reached first contact in general, like, what was running through your mind as this round started? Like, were you expecting them to come a certain direction? Well, I was scouting. So, I'm, so when I'm scouting on this map, okay, I'm looking at, there's all those ridge in the, in the, the delta column. You, you guys know, like, all those ridges down there, it's pretty easy to pick out people skylining. And usually someone's careless enough to do it. So I am I just need to get wide and look at those ridges. And I ended up seeing... What ended up happening was actually my squad hit a bunch of contact before I saw anything. And then everyone died. And the only problem with that was that both my fire team leads also died. And so I, I, the only contact I had... The only comms I had was with was with my squad mates, so I had to have them sit next to command or as another squad leader, and and that's when I started seeing everyone popping up on the ridges and stuff. So it was like uh, I'm relaying it to my squad, who's next to an SL, who's then relaying it to SL, who's then relaying it to command. So it was a little bit of telephone, but um, I, I had no idea where they were gonna come from. So I mean, you're just like full like, I mean, I could have got walked up on and stuff. So Mostly, I'm just hoping to spot them and then get the hell out of there, <laughs> which sort of is what happened. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the first. Like how, how scary it must be. Yeah, it's especially on this map, man. Yeah, the uh, Google Tricks squad walked right up on another U.S. squad to to get that D column range you were talking about, but uh, they didn't do so well. Kind of turned the game. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that's so that was the squad I was in, and so they all died, and so I had no comms with anybody, oh, and that's pretty bad as a scout. So I was like basically telephoning my my calls through my squad mates to an SL to command. Um, so I, you know, I, it, I don't know, I have literally no idea how well it worked or not. I don't, I have no idea. Um, but that was pretty unfortunate, uh, start. So, Mighty, you've played this this operation uh, probably numerous times. What do you think your favorite thing or favorite aspect about this map or this operation in general is? Everything, every night op we run is amazing. Um, I, I, I think, uh, okay, so I guess this has also changed. So you have to remember, this has changed since the update with mines and IEDs and everything. Since, like, all, all that's a new aspect to this. I mean, for me, I haven't played it since we've done that. Um, I think my favorite thing about this op and about the ops that we do on Logar Night is that it's so quiet and then it just gets insane. So, yeah, there's no... yeah, yeah I there's... mean, it just, it just, it just. It, 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 there's no middle ground. It's like nothing, or it looks like Star Wars and like like with tracers flying around you. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely my favorite part of the night maps is the tracers. Just watching that, it's amazing. Oh, it's it's cool. It's it's also very like heart poundy, <laughs> definitely. Um, but that's the best part about the ops. And and this map on night, like we have nightmare, talent vigil, 
Uh, what else am I forgetting? Um, a Midnight Mass is on this one, I think, right? So there's like three different ops with different experiences on this night map because it's so good. Uh, yeah, there it's fun. It's always fun. So you're gonna be on the U.S. side this time. It sounds like, huh? Right, Mighty? Yes. Yeah. Hope I. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm hoping um, we can do as well as they did. <laughs> I have my doubts, <laughs> but um, we'll see. Um, it's they found the first mine. It sounds like, which is so key, because it really did. The mines didn't have like much effect at all, which is surprising. I mean, they eventually did, but that his striker got in some good shots before it died, which is important if you're on the US. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This he is has like a great job of taking out that striker. Yeah, I mean it ended up working out well. And this is like this is like a, a fun version of an escort mission from some video game that you played where you run in front of your decks and stuff like that. So um if if it, this is cool because everyone in this game has a, I mean, everyone always has an important role to play, but especially now because everyone's looking for mines, and that's the biggest and IEDs, and that's the biggest, most important thing. Um, so it's definitely like amps up the tension. Right, just laying out in the middle of the road with your shovel trying to find a mine. It's crazy. Yep. Well, I'm gonna get going because they are gonna be mad at me because I'm not listening to them talk right now. So <laughs> thanks for pulling me in here. Uh, yeah, cross um, your fingers. You Hopefully, my squad doesn't die right away. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks for coming in. Good luck. All right, keep doing. Uh, keep doing a good job in the stream, guys. Thanks, y'all. Right. Thank you, mighty. All right, guys. Now it's mighty. Well, welcome back. It looks like we're about to start round two here pretty soon. Let's uh, go ahead and go over what uh, what the mission is for those who are joining us late. This is Operation Silent Vigil. Uh, the U.S. have to do a route clearance, and part of that is they are going to clear some mines that the INS has laid out. Let's talk about the U.S. assets real quick. Uh, each squad gets uh, two ARs, two GLs, which is we saw in the last round cleared out compounds fairly well, a medic. The INS gets uh, two ARs, one LAT, a scout kit, and a medic also. They have to wander. Looks like we, uh, including that, the U.S. also has to escort a striker around. They also get a logistics truck, which they can set up a fire base in different, loca different locations. <laughs> And uh, as they're going around, they have to clear this red route here marked on the map there. Uh, they have to pick those mines, clear them, and then move uh, back to their fire base, which they hold until the INS either quits or dies. Well, let's get into the U.S. brief here and see what Karma Cut has planned. Set up in two prisons on the center hill marked by the three uh, green castles on the hill. Center castle will be command. On my left will be pony. On the right will be uh, Google. Simultaneously, Jack and Pure will be moving to the north to set up the fire base with the mortar on the red mark or on the secondary green mark in Echo 3. Once uh, Pure and Google, uh, Pure and Jack squad reach that area, they'll both harden up with the striker. Striker will hold that pause. Mortals will set, and we'll uh, start firing on um, predetermined locations, uh, i.e. suspected ambush spots. Once we've cleared up the uh, suspected ambush spots with a couple mortar rounds, infantry from the hill will push to clear it out. We'll push the striker forward. Striker will proceed westbound off its current mark. As it proceeds westbound, infantry near the striker will have their eyes to the north, as that hill to the south will be under our infantry control. As we get closer to the uh, center of the town, Striker will hold on current striker pause. Infantry on the hill will push east to west down into the city. From these green marks to the new green marks. Sweeping the town of mine and IEDs. Once the town has been cleared of mine and IEDs, striker will follow. We'll restack the column. At the front of the column will be pony squad, followed by the 
Uh, striker followed by Google. Uh, we'll proceed southbound as, as a column to the exit. Um, does anyone have any questions? What if they're in the northeast where our fob location is in fourth? Um, at that point, Pure and uh, Jack Squad will harden up and engage, and INF or I, in, our infantry will QRF to assist and flank. Uh, but we'll deal with that. This, this plan allows us to remain extremely flexible. Um, once again, as we move with the convoy, time is a priority. If we are not being in, uh, if we're not locked down in a prolonged engagement, if we're only taking small arms fire, we are moving. Okay. You are scanning the ground. You're watching your spacing. Because if an ID or a mine goes off, you're, there's going to be blast damage. I don't want any more than two people getting hit by one blast. There's lats too, so make sure your spacing is fucking clear as you're pushing through. Watch the hills. They're going to have spotters and scouts up there. IEDs planted all around. So just keep your eyes open. Head on us, and we'll keep moving. All right. Any, any more questions? All right. Solid. Squad leaders, go ahead and break them out. We'll set for left. Caches, aren't we gonna get to the city before they so do? So anyway, man, what is your best uh, Sean yeah. Connor well, yeah. So imitation. if anything, we'll set up on the hill and we'll watch him come over. I, and I think it will be something like this Sean Connor right Turkey. now. As soon as something oh like this. <laughs> oh my god. My god. Hey, uh, <laughs> here, note down these uh, cache locations. Uh, You're gonna want to mortar like gone. the Charlie nice. column, oh. right? Because they're gonna, or like the Bravo, Can right side Bravo up? column, left side Charlie. Or Bravo oh, Charlie. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay, Goodness. I'll go ahead because you're gonna be in range. Or even actually, by the time we get more south, they'll probably be like western side of DC. Okay. Can you move the logi up forward, please? Wait, are we pushing forward? Yeah, I'll turn it around. We're not gonna lose the strike anymore. Right? I'm gonna be in front of you. Live in one mic, live in one mic. No bad luck. Dan, I want you to find the most powerful. Well, the U.S. brief is complete. It looks like they're setting up their vehicles. Everybody's getting set up to leave the uh, the main. Uh, sounds like Karma Cut's plan is to go up to the north, uh, set up the fire base at the north northern location. Well, he has overwatch on that hill in the decom that Mighty was talking about before, so that uh, once they do swoop around, they can use that infantry on the hill to move into the city and clear out the insurgency there. So it looks like we're going to be live here in 30 seconds. So it looks like the insurgency has uh, the INS has to start way on the west side of the map. I wonder how that's going to change things. All right, and we are live. We got the insurgents starting to move out. The key thing for the insurgents is definitely to get to their set positions right away and get uh, get all set up for the U.S. So if the U.S. catches them moving, they're going to give away their position. Yeah, it looks like they had to start far there on the west side of the map. That's uh, it's a little different setup. That's kind of one of the unique things about these uh, this op here is that they, they can spawn at any of the cache locations. So depending on where those spawn sets are, they, they can they can start. And it looks like they've chosen that southern one. So it's a bit of a walk. Lucky for them, uh, the U.S. team is going to patrol the north side. So it gives them time to go ahead and set up in the south side down there in the district center. So that, that'll be fun to see. Oh, yeah, definitely. We've got the uh, insurgent techie moving up, trying to. It looks like they're trying to give a scare to the U.S. if they if the U.S. happens to go down that MSR right away. And they in didn't this hit. map, especially the, the techies are going to be loud. Any vehicle is going to be loud. You can hear from the distance. They didn't v bid uh, that uh, Lushy truck, did they? <laughs> you know what? I don't know. Let me check. 
So that would be a hell of a tactic. Looks like no, they did not be with that te that uh, technical. It looks like they might actually use some of the vehicles in this one, which is uh, gives them an advantage. Those Dishkas parked up behind the hill can lay down some good suppression, especially since the U.S. team looks like they're going to park themselves on the east side over here on the, the higher ground still. It looks like they're getting their minds set up right now. The insurgents getting their minds set up on the MSR towards the north. And I think it's a new cool feature, you know, new cool feature along with these explosives. You can definitely dig them up so they're a lot more hidden. Um, I only got to so finding a good place to these mines is key. Like, you can definitely mix it up with a lot of the trash that's on the map. Make it look like another piece of trash. You also can give, you can also put down dummy rocks to try and give it a little bit more cover. And in a way, you can either do two things for it. You can make it stick out a lot more or you can give it great cover. So, we'll see how this plays out. It looks like they already got their mortar set up on the US, U.S. side, and they're going to send out some rounds here. Oh, we got mines coming, or not mines, sorry, mortars coming in. Up oh, a little far, just west. Of Shadow's ritual squad. So it may seem that the U.S. has visual on this insurgent, on these insurgents. Where do you want this they know they're there. The okay, do you want me so to the U.S. are at advantage right now. It looks like they have eyes on where no, no, the, fine. at least fine. the squads are on this MSR. All right, all right. Four is set and ready to advance on command. Striker crew set. Oh, and some engagement right now from the U.S. onto the insurgents in the compound here. Taking on Shadow yeah. Ritual Squad, pinning him down. And yeah, this is another good thing that Mighty was talking about, but these tracers are amazing. Yeah, yeah. They've got two full squads up here parked on this hill with command in the middle of uh, these two squads. they got a really good overwatch position on the town to watch them move in. Karma Cut's directing those mortars in where he wants them. Yeah, the insurgents now working their way into different compounds, getting themselves nice and spread out. That's a smart move, because you definitely don't want a whole squad in one compound. That would be a made-throwing frenzy for the U.S. if they got that, or even for their uh, for their mortars. mortars up. Right, yeah, those mortars, especially the Karma Cutter, are probably going to be spot on. Spot on to the other team teammates, or their own? Yeah, I want a good amount of distance. <laughs> little inside joke, sorry guys, you got to... Be on Karma Squad to understand. Looks like one of those mortars uh, yeah, sure down one of their guys over here already. Yep, looks like we lost Little Jin. Little Jin down by a mortar strike, I believe. And uh, Is that... Soko took a hit. Oh, insurgents returning fire with that tanky. Definitely get a hold down. Shoot some suppression to the U.S. on the hill. How's it looking over there, expert? Oh, this, these two U.S. squads are definitely reeling back from that Dishka oh. fire. Got another one down from Karma's Mortar Fire. Okay, I'll take back exactly what I said earlier. That's took out two <laughs> people now with those mortars. Uh, B-Dog took out a... He was taken out by a mortar round. So great job to Karma and his mortar squad. Took out two people early in the round. Well, it looks like the first squad from last round, Google Trek squad, that uh, took contact right away has moved into the east side of the, uh, the district center already. It looks like they got good cover. Yeah, it looks like right now, too, the insurgents are laying down fire all along the ridge line, giving everything some more. Oh, it looks like USMC Torch just got one shot. I'm not sure if it was that disco that was firing from the hill. It was a random fire, but it looks like he just got one shot and downed on the US side. Is uh, INS command down? It looks like it to me. Yes, Dr. Kamikaze is down. Oh, more mortar fire coming in. Close to Hesmic at the north. Definitely landing along the MSRs. And it's good spread fire from that mortar round. It's not just one specific location. He's spreading those real rounds out, making sure he's giving love to the whole city, or at least to this section. We can wait these 
It looks like the INS is uh, at least one squad's pushing out of the city now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hearing also from Shadow Ritual squad that they use giving them orders to wait it out, to not rush anything or peek out. Like we might have There's some a contact. lot of great trades. Got yeah, a, a lot of trades. Yeah, this is crazy. Tracers flying back and forth at elevation. That's crazy. Looks like this uh, squad with Ham lead in it is about to push up on these uh, guys on this uh, eastern hill. The INS are going to get really close to the U.S. now. Oh, those mortars coming in. They are accurate on I mean, who is that? Turtle Guy 5 is surrounded by mortar fire, but thankfully to those buildings, he is safe. He's not taking any damage, but those mortars are directly on him. So it looks like right now that the INS is actually pushing onto the Americans that are on the hill, bringing the fight to them. You're doing a great job staying concealed, staying hidden, and coming up behind them with the element of surprise. I feel like with night maps like these, that's definitely a great benefit to both sides is the element of surprise. Once you lose that, kind of, you know, kind of take a lot harder. It's a lot harder to, to over see the other opponent. So best pony squad being flanked right now. I have no idea that there's insurgents right behind them, but I'm pretty sure the insurgents know uh, where the U.S. are. Oh, we've got Rate, got eyes on Sightless, I believe. Sightless has no idea that they're behind. Oh, when he's engaging and Sightless is down, great shot. Great shot by Rate. Oh, and another person down. Pony squad lead down by Shem of Godsborn. But the U.S. are definitely getting a beating right now from behind from this flanking INS team. Rocky playing cleanup, cleaned up Kahuna. Rocky, Rocky and Henley moving up. Skuldis is engaging or shooting up, trying to. Oh, it's down by Henley. Henley takes down Skuldish. We've got Rocky chasing down Boogie. Boogie has no idea, and he's down. Insurgents doing a great job again on this side. It looks like they pushed him off that hill. You've got uh, Krusty, Say, the Matrix, and Lucid all running into DC now. They, uh, they don't want to deal with that contact up on the hill anymore, getting pinned between the Dishka on the west and the, the flanking element on the east. They're trying to... Yeah, definitely. Right? Looks like they're going to try to get it, it with Google Tricks and his squad down here in the, the district center. Yeah, but definitely whatever was left over of the squad that was on the hills have moved down towards the city to try and assist the rest of their team. Looks like they don't want any part of that flank. Oh, and the flanking continues. It looks like that the U.S. is aware now of the INS that's behind them. And they're being sandwiched. INS right now are sandwiching that squad to the north. Yeah, they don't have anywhere to go, either face the Dishka, or retreat, or face the INS oh. flank. And those GLs going to work on Rocky. Rocky is now down. What? Oh, great GL fire right now from the U.S. Yeah, we need heavy suppressive fire, like fucking everyone. Yep, Hamlet's requesting suppressive fire on the U.S. U.S. squad to the north. Requesting the three squad now. Oh, and the U.S. or the U.S. mortars coming in on the previous location of the INS soldiers. Oh, it takes out Sham. Sham is down from those mortars. And those, those mortars, mortars are doing. They are doing work. What else do we have? Oh, just got word that command is now down for the U.S. Oh man. And Google Trex and his squad down here are in heavy contact. Uh, half of them are injured. The INS are just swallowing them up right now. 
Yeah, it looks like the flanking force as well that are on the hills is starting to slow down now that they've lost a couple. Yeah, the INS has only lost four so far. The USF lost nine. Had an IED go off here in the south, didn't really get a visual on it. But it looks like it didn't take any effects. No losses with that IED explosion. Alright. Uh, US comms are going a little crazy right now, trying to restart the command structure. I'm getting a sit rep on how many guys are left, how who's effective, what the ammo situation's like. I got Terry the tally right now about to engage once this smoke clears up. Doing a great job being patient, holding up inside this building. But he does not know that these US soldiers are right outside his door. I'm pretty sure he hears them walking around though. Looks like, oh, crazy Russian taken out by Lucid. Another ID gone off. No losses, unfortunately. Oh, Krusty the Sailor taking out by Dentrick. Dentrick takes out Krusty the Sailor. Terry the Tally holding on still. Great with he's... patience. He looks like he's covered with smoke all over the place. Yeah, you can't see anything from his point of view. So Miyamoto just barely misses Terry. Oh, Terry has visual. Oh, he takes a shot. Misses. Marimoto knows that he's outside now. Marimoto throws a nade, tosses it right out. Or is that a nade or a smoke? Looks like a smoke. Oh, another shot made by Terry. Missed. Oh, and who's that down? The Google Trek's down by Dentrick. Dentrick on a roll right now. Took out Krusty the Sailor, now takes out Google. You guys got any mines over here? I dug up one mine already. Miyamoto probably freaking out, wondering how did his teammates die? <laughs> yeah. We've got smoke to our direct north. Oh, on this one. Looks like we've got Lucid back here. It says like the U.S. command is just falling apart. One one new name keeps popping up, and uh, Hamley just... takes out Lucid. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, clear. I don't know how many of them, but I think it's like six. Fair enough. You gotta give it up to uh, Kami's Kami's platoon. Doing a great job both rounds, but hey, it's not over yet. It could turn around just like it did the last round. We thought the U.S. is gonna win. I've got my squad is gonna watch that south landmine. Yeah, no audio. I think they might be. Looks like we've lost another. Yeah, another U.S. squad leader down. Oh, Dentrick takes out Sir Rex right before being taken out by Michael Frost. They're just Michael whittling down the U.S. Yeah. U.S. is just getting whittled down little by little here. Dramatic. Hey, Fig, I need your help again. You need you to bail me out again, dude. God damn it. We're uh, looking through mighty size right now. You getting shot. Go low, go low, go low. Looks like he's getting, uh, getting some heals going on there. Once you get hit in these night maps, you can hardly see anything. Oh, Michael Frost being engaged by Racine, I believe. Yeah, Racine's engaging Michael Frost. So far, the INS have lost 17 or 12, and the US has lost 17. We got some little engagements in there. Oh. Racing taking some fire, as well as Harrison from the INF. Oh, we're sleeping. Oh, and through oh. the wall. 
That striker that just ritual's wall down. pinned him. Great shot by that striker. Got American GLs going off in the buildings. Looks like the INS still have those dishkatekis parked up there in the hills. U.S. have lost 18. The INS have only lost 13 so far. Oh, more engagements right now. Looks like Hamlet is engaged in Harrison and Miyamoto and... Skos Gaming. Yeah, Skos Gaming is down. So you lost Turtle Guy 5, that's hit by Skos Gaming. Hey, Ham, can you tell now all we have is Harrison and Miyamoto. Me. But definitely they, they, the insurgents know that the U.S. are here behind this wall. It looks like there's only one medic left for at least in this area for the insurgents. Hearing this go off in the grand chat. Trying to scurry around looking for a medic. Oh, and another one down. Hamlet takes out. Yeah, the U.S. is just getting whittled down here. This is like they're holding, but they're not uh, not doing anything. They're not working buddy teams to clear out this the different sectors or windows or angles or anything. They're just holding right now. Sounds like they got mortars trying to come in to help suppress the contacts in front of them, but they're not coming quick enough. Yeah. I, really want I guess you say the biggest back. part about this, too, as well, is communication. Once you lose that communication with your squad leads and the squad leads are down, it gets really hectic. Yeah, it sounds like it's fire team leads right now trying to take over. Just for cover on this uh, alleyway. Yeah. We're on Big Geek. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I don't need to. So the U.S. mission is to clear these mines, and it doesn't look like they have cleared any so far. They're, the INS have taken control of the, the, the match so far. They're sitting here waiting for... Oh, those mortars are dead on, too. Oh, we just lost Big Yes, those mortar rounds. Very shot again by those mortars. Yeah, the U.S. have lost 20 so far to the INS-13, it looks like. It's on the uh, U.S. now to move, keep moving forward, keep clearing those mines. More mortar rounds going off. Again, giving love to the whole city. Barely missing the insurgents. Sort of. My squad's down to two people. Uh, I'm not quite sure. My squad's down to six. We're on the striker right now with Silverman in the driver's seat. He is just waiting, looking, scanning, waiting for the insurgents to pop their heads out. The, the foot soldiers need to go ahead and clear that out for him before he can move forward or he's going to hit a, hit a mine. It looks like we've got Rancine behind the striker too with the eyes on. It looks like also from the U.S. side, they finally ditched that mortar emplacement. I think that was the last of their rounds, and they're getting ready to push up and join the fight with everybody else. It's going to be a long walk for these U.S. soldiers, though, if they don't have any vehicles to take down to the uh, objective points. Getting too snagged, I don't want to say here. Everybody, two up. Everybody, watch north. Good to hear. Got Magnus Arceus, Strawby Melvin. Just a reminder, we are coming. Sounds like the U.S. is out of mortar ammo now. Silverman is in command comms, and I guess they're trying to get a game plan together here. Gunner, do you see anything on the ridge? Do you see anything on the ridge? If not, we're getting out of here. We're in a bad spot. To our direct front? Yeah. So we got Turner and Racine over here. Seeing if they can get more eyes on these American troops. But it looks like it's Nathan. Nathan, I'm sorry. Nathan takes out racing with that GL. Great shot by Nathan. What a shot by Nathan. Do you think we will be able to sneak around on the North Hill to try to look down that uh, kill box? 
Looks like that mortar team is now coming to assist the U.S. here in the city. They're going to be pushing over those eastern hills again with SM Paradise in their lead. He's the only original squad leader left. The U.S. definitely taking a lot of time a lot more now. Now that they know they've been engaged, now that they know that they don't have the element of the surprise anymore, they're definitely going to slow down a lot more now, if you can only imagine. Absolutely. You got to start conserving your numbers here and uh, take it slow, check those corners. I mean, any murder hole, doorway, or window in this city is, is could possible INS gun poking out of it. Oh, and I believe Turner can hear some movement, trying to figure out where it's coming from. You've got Saga moving up. Turner still holding still. You've got the striker turned on, ready to move. Oh, never mind. Turn his engine right back off. Uh, yeah, I think the, the U.S. team is waiting for these reinforcements to come down the hill and help them out here, clear this road ahead. Got like a skeleton crew, crew just holding security on the striker right now. It's like the INS is just sitting in waiting for them to cross this uh, kill box they've set up down here. Looks like the bulk of the INS uh, IEDs and mines are just stacked in this little corridor, just like the first round. We've got a lot of INS soldiers just waiting, waiting for the U.S. to push through. Yeah, and if you, if you have some notice too, if you've ever taken our AWS uh, courses at all, or, uh, you, the uh, vehicle training, you'll notice that these U.S. soldiers are doing a great 360 on the striker. Definitely securing, you know, perimeter, making sure that the striker's safe and that no enemies are coming in to try and you know, shoot a light at close range or try and ambush it. Doing a great job. Oh, it looks like Darwin got uh, Gobzor. It's the way the U.S. is going to have to do it from here on out. It's just slow pickings. Yeah, definitely. And I believe right now they're outnumbered, correct? Yeah, the U.S. has lost 23 and the insurgency has lost 16. Yeah, so about a good seven people ahead. Yeah, they definitely want to take, take their time more now. Again, it's, it's mapped like these, it can be a roller coaster, and it's great because, you know, one moment it's completely silent, you don't know what's going to happen. Next thing you know, everything's complete chaos, traces are going off. To yeah. point by my they made earlier when we gave him an interview. It's crickets one moment, and it's cracks of bullets the next. Yeah, we're giving away a squad key. If you go ahead and check out the uh, Twitch chat, there's links to it to uh, Gleam. Uh, go ahead and enter that. Be sure to check us out at squadots.gg. If you haven't subscribed to our Twitch yet, do that too. Sometimes we don't host on Wednesdays and Saturdays. We like this last Friday, we hosted a reg only event. Oh. Engagement right now by Turner. Turner being engaged by the Silverman that's in the striker. Turner manages to take out Saga and slip away easily from that striker. Great job by Turner now disengaging, getting out of there. The U.S. knows he's there and he just wants to get out of there. Well, the match ends in about 23 minutes, so the U.S. has about 23 minutes to clear this final roadblock uh, mine area and get back to their base. Looks like that looks like that reinforcement squad has has arrived just east of the compound where the bulk of the uh, INS is hiding out in. Let's see if SM Paradise and his squad can help out and clear out this compound.
guys are watching this uh, push from the east right now with this reinforcement squad. Pushing down road, I think, as well. Oh, and there goes the engagement. Well, Darman was lucky earlier where he got Gobsor, but he wasn't lucky this time when he picked that corner. But the US definitely knows there's contact inside this compound now. Ooh, that takes out their squad leader, I said in paradise. That frag RPG was nasty. They got Nidus patching, and the U.S. seems to be backing off that door now. Yeah, it's a little too heavy for them. Oh, sorry. The insurgents getting Nancy moving out to try and clear. They hear them patching. Three, can you get visual on that thing and take it out or no? I'm relaying information. Oh, down goes Big Jimmy, but Nidus, Nidus. Oh, and down goes Hamley. Oh, it looks like Magnus Arcanus just took over the squad and helped him out by knocking down two of the INS poking out. Squad lead boys. A frame on that. But there's still four INS. I don't know if he has any FTLs left. Um, uh, one, if you can relay, uh, just have them fucking harden up, hold their fucking compound. A lot of communication going on right now with the U.S. guys down here on the ground, trying to figure out how they're going to breach this compound. Uh, probably. Here in the uh, command chat from, there's two more mines left that the U.S. has to clear. They have about 20 minutes to do so. So it's a fully you lovely viewers out there. Uh, the U.S. have the task of taking out the mines that have been set by the insurgent forces. Uh, I believe there's a total of about three or four mines, and currently there are two left, two mines left for the U.S. to clear on these uh, service roads, these MSRs. If they don't, if they don't uh, complete the mission by digging up those mines, then they, they lose. The insurgents win. Yeah, this is definitely a tough gig for the U.S. All this clearing, the mine clearing, all the different uh, uh, missions they have to accomplish to get everything done in this uh, this operation. It's definitely not easy. It looks like the U.S. are going to make an attempt to try and clear this compound. I hate the the side door. Door. Yeah, no one's watching the side door. Yeah, and no one's watching the yeah. side door. The the insurgents acknowledge that. They just said it in local chat. Oh. Hey, Terry, from Terry, where? Peek that. Terry, peek that now. Oh, Nidus goes down. I Terry can... kills Nidus. All right, thank you. We got to watch that south door, guys. What are we doing? Oh, okay. they don't know that. Gee, man. Oh, here we go. Magnus Arcaeus takes out Skline. And Zed takes out Magnus Arcaeus. Zed and Terry will take those shots to Magnus Arcaeus. Trying to clear these compounds is a deadly game for sure. You know, given the time that they have, you think that they pick it up a little bit more just to focus on the MSRs and clearing the mines. There's two mines. Right, push past it, yeah. yeah. That's what I did in the EU round. I tried to have my guys just watch the doors and the windows as we walked down the road because the INS would then have to expose themselves instead of us having to go in, inside and try to clear them out, which push, walk right by and wait until they come outside. Yep, exactly. The reverse bait. So you get them to hear their minds being dug up, they pop their heads out, and you're just there waiting to take them out. Great strategy. Cool. You know, easily, I, I would imagine that with that striker, since it can break, it can shoot through the walls, I'd imagine that they'd have enough ammo to just light up a compound and clear it out that way. Right, or at least suppress it while they move past something, something to give these soldiers a chance to get through these uh, these little uh, open areas in the road here. Coming out with the 
Go on. Roger. I can't tell if the INS. Okay, good. I said I can't tell if the INS have any scouts left to uh, trigger the IEDs that they've got down. You know, I didn't realize we were so focused on the, all the action going on in the city. You don't realize how many more INS soldiers, soldiers there are in the outskirts as well. You got to remember, too, that not everybody knows exactly what's going on around the map at all times. So you just have to be ready for anything. And obviously, the squad here to the, uh, to the south is prepared for anything to come that direction, which nothing. Anyway. <laughs> nothing yet, right? But they're all watching the different angles. They're, they're ready. They also got good sight lines right down that little kill box area where the, the U.S. has to cross now. Yep, definitely. So we've got Nasty Maiden Quirkly squad down to the south. Uh, believe, yeah, it's Quirkly Squad. And then we've also to the north, we've yeah, got who is this? Stray Dog and Rival Helicopter and the Techie giving Overwatch from the north. So it's a great, yeah. great vision on the city. Yep, they've got elevation north and south now, and the US has to push right along that. We're coming up on about 15 minutes right now until the match is over. Still need two to, uh, mines for the U.S. to get it until they lose the match. Break, break, break. I've got eyes on enemy infantry on the main road. Uh, right now, it looks like they're fucking standing under a goddamn streetlight digging something up. Sounds like the U.S. is doing a little local comms, saying that there's still guys the in the their box, compound. The it's like directly... Uh, east of INS resupply. Eyes on one times enemy infantry. So it sounds like your command comes that Quirkly has eyes on enemy infantry in the main street. Looks like they are getting visual right now on Fulcrum. Uh, who is that? Slinger and Fig. Looks like the U.S. is investigating a rock where an IED is hidden underneath. Hearing here in command comes that they think that the northernmost IED is being dug up by the U.S. soldiers, and really they're just staring at a rock. <laughs> yes, they are. They they're arguing or, or trying to figure out if they're going to dig it up or what they're going to do with it. Looks like they're going to volunteer Slinger to go with this shovel and dig it up. And that great vision on that IED. And it looks like they are going to dig that up. U.S. soldier who's brave enough to do this. Digging it up again. He's just sitting Slinger. Two times enemy infantry are yeah, and that little element down to the south there has got a perfect eyes on that. That shit floats, man. Slinger barely missed getting his head blown off. Looks like they're going to try to move the striker, maybe suppress those targets to the south. There that goes. That kill guy that shot at Slinger. That looks like that's the only way to really do it. You can't get that striker to pass unless you take out that IED. Yeah, it sounds like they hear the Dishka now in the south. Slinger's going back in again with the shovel. Give it a second try. Big's trying to build up his confidence, say that the guy that shot him is dead now. But yet there's three or four more guys still looking at him. And the U.S. have successfully dug up that IED. For the most part, they should be safely uh, free to move forward with that striker. Again, we're at about 13 minutes. Till the U.S. Uh, loses the match, they have to dig two more mines. IEDs do not count. They have to dig the two mines that are, low, that are on the MSR that have been planted by the INS. Do you have uh, any visual of where those uh, mines are, Expit? Well, it looks like you've got uh, one that's planted just at the end of this uh, roadblock kind of area. 
or is that an IED? I can't tell. They just yellow skulls on my screen. I de they definitely have a mine uh, planted at here at the intersection just south of where everybody's set up right now. Oh, and the striker taking fire. Dermal plash dodging death. I guess he's not going to pick up that anymore. Oh, wait. So the U.S. know that they could possibly be surrounded in these next set of compounds. So it's a tough decision for the U.S. It's, do they push up and rush it? Do they take their time and figure out where these insurgents are? A lot of decisions that have to be made within a short yeah. amount of time. Well, they definitely know there's contact in this compound that they're sitting next to right now. That's the same compound, I think, where they've lost, where the U.S. have lost about, what, three members? Three At least three. Compound? And then two on the outside. It's, uh, it's becoming a real graveyard for them. Yeah, the surgeon's doing a great job holding this down, holding down their, their sector. Sector and Oh, more engagements. Yeah, Fig engaging with Fluffy. Like a slinger sticking up or something else. Oh, and the striker finally using his abilities and shooting through the wall, penetrating through those walls, trying to give some type of suppression or even injuring any possible insurgents. Oh, Fig taken out by Fluffy. Like one of those things, it's like, when do you know when to leave it alone? Pull them down by Zed. Yep, a compound claims another. That's one of those things where you just have to let it go. Yep, and they're finally starting to let it go. They realize that the U.S. have lost enough soldiers, they just need to push. Or not. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, hold on. I, I dug up that mine that was up ahead here. Okay. Hold, 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 hold. Striker, hold. Striker, hold. Striker, hold. Striker, hold. These U.S. soldiers and the striker have a lot ahead of them to clear. Oh, no. Slinger. Right. Open door. That rock's clear. The shovel he man's down seven. now. That's seven people now taken down by this compound. Oh, and there you go. Striker using his abilities and shooting through those walls. Try to slow forward. I don't see him. Give me the ammo that you have in those strikers, that's where you just keep doing it. Just light up every compound that's around you. As long as your well, friendlies aren't in the way. The U.S. have lost 32. INS only 21. Got about less than 10 minutes remaining now in the match. It's still two mines to go to be cleared by the U.S. soldiers. This compound that has been taking many, many U.S. soldiers' lives. This is a clear case of focus on the objective. They still have a my, they still have a IED here in this kill box right next to that compound, and they've got one mine to the south, uh, just before the turn, and another mine at the cross at the intersection just south of the. You up game? I'm looking for this techie. Oh, my nade went far. Uh, can you just run across the door and check this? <sighs> okay, let me let me get it. Let me get the mine up here first. Oh crap! It opened again. <laughs> oh, looks like your soldiers digging up one of the mines right now. Thanks, Boogie. Is that game master me? 
I believe that's the ID. One of the mines. Uh, I think that's mine. just an ID. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it was a mine. Oh, gosh. That's one mine down, one last mine to go. Gosh. Which is a little bit further down this MSR that they are on. Which again, they have to clear that in under eight minutes. So the U.S. has about seven and a half-ish minutes to clear out another oh, now, landmine. Now he's working on the IED. Taking next to your friendly down way south, northwest of him. Yes. yes. Yeah, good strategy. Strategy definitely would be to uh, use that striker's gun to suppress or at least mask the shoveling of the mines or the IEDs. That way, you know, the insurgents don't know when to pop out and shoot. Oh, the U.S. only have three soldiers left and a striker. <laughs> yeah, from my angle, I can easily count how many there are left. Looks like we've got the Silverman, Game Master, me, and Nathan. Looks like Nathan... Oh, well, oh. looks like, yep. Yeah. Finally, the compound falls. <laughs> By Nathan. Great work by Nathan clearing out that compound where other seven or eight soldiers couldn't do. He did it by himself. Oh, there we go. The last soldier looking for that last mine. Can he find it? Can I find it? Yep, they're definitely moving the pace a lot faster now. Get a lot ahead of them and behind them. Well, probably one kind of soldier. Oh! Um. And that IED successfully takes out Game Master Me. That was a nice IED. Injures Nathan and takes out Game Master Me. Great work by the scout who detonated that. And great communication by the INS to the... To, uh, it sounds like uh, right it looks like uh, they pulled up this uh, discotheque to the west here at this crossroads. And there's a mine sitting right there. Looks like they, we have may have the last engagement taking place at this crossroads. Yep, and I've got the last mine in visual right now. Not sure if the striker sees it 100%. They've got about four minutes to finish this. Four and a half minutes. I don't know if he sees this mine. It's like Silverman's marketing with some 50, 50 caliber. Man comes going crazy and they're ready to take out the striker. Yeah, Nathan says that there's a technical down the road. Oh, engagement to oh, the minesweeper. No. And our minesweeper Nathan goes down. Techie engaging the striker. Oh, well, this could be it. And that dish guy rolls up now. This I think this is it. end it. The striker still holding on to your life. Takes another rocket. It's still up. You can hear the soldier inside taking fire damage from the striker being on fire. Silverman taking the heat. He doesn't want to hop out. Oh, another! This striker just will not die. Either they're using the wrong rounds, or they're just missing. Don't know what's going on, but someone's going to die soon. I can't believe he's just sitting there taking all this. Turtle guy is using his turtle shell to protect him. Oh, that wasn't Joe. That was Silverman. Excuse me. Why did I think that was Joe? Uh, where am I at? He withstands the fire, Silverman. Takes the fire damage and still manages to stay in the striker. I'm not sure if the U.S. still has any LATs, but or sorry, not U.S. The insurgent still has any lats or RPGs to shoot. 
No, but they're definitely bringing in another technical to the uh, the West, it sounds like. Oh, man. The striker has no idea right now. It's an SPG technical. Oh, that's the end of that technical. Oh, and the striker takes out the techie. Oh, Silverman leaves his fortress of solitude. Oh, striker focuses on the kill hole and takes him out. Poor Mother Texas is down. Oh, and he tries to dig the mine, and he goes down. Good game by the U.S. Good game by both sides. That was a good one right down to the end. This is a great session, man. Not saying the EU event wasn't a good session, but this is a great session. Both games very, very close. I got the guy. I got the last guy. I got the last guy. Oh my goodness. I got the last guy. So, thanks for coming out, watching us uh, go at it tonight. Uh, make sure you uh, click on that uh, link for the uh, Squad Key giveaway. Uh, check it out at squadops.gg. Uh, I'm going to scan through the Twitch chat, see if we missed any questions or comments. Stick around. we got some other stuff going on tonight. Yeah, again, thank you guys for coming out. We definitely wouldn't be the community that we are now without you guys. Your views, your support, your hello. just being with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, hello, Karma. Hello. Hello. Howdy. So how, how do you, do you think feel? that... What? <laughs> I was gonna say, how do you feel? How do you feel that game went for you? I, I think it went great. It went great. It was uh, I was really tense at moments. It was good fun. It was good, really good fun. Yeah, but it was it was so stressful. It, it's, there's a lot of humor and intensity in these operations. Um, there's a lot of, you know, when you see Game Master me digging up the ID, you just crossing your fingers, hoping that guy's not watching you dig it up, you know? Um, so there's just, yeah, it's just great. It's great. I had a good time all throughout. Yeah, these ops definitely create those moments for guys who participate in them, for sure. Uh, I thought for sure that when you took that high ground on the east side that, uh, you know, you would have good overwatch on the city, but they placed those dishkas in the west and yeah they they you saw like how dynamic this op can be like that first round we were uh we were playing it really really slow and this round they, they abused the uh mobility of the technicals and got all around us fired from multiple positions hit and runs uh so it's it's really cool to see the different strategies that uh different commanders will employ depending on like the situation <clears throat> We were just talking about the tracer fire on these night maps and how wonderful it's to see that kind of stuff. It's oh, like, it's beautiful. Or, or watching like the IEDs go off or any explosions. It's it's the lighting on this map is just fantastic. Well, that's another great night of uh, of uh, this op. Uh, it's it's taking some changes, but I, I really like the, the the mines being involved here. Uh, the IEDs, all the explosions, it really makes it really tense for the U.S. It almost almost kind of turns the op around and makes the uh, INS the stronger force on this one. Puts the onus on the U.S. to go slow and steady and uh, watch all the doors and things like that. I mean, we were talking about that one compound, uh, just holding it down for the INS and the U.S. soldiers yeah. just kept streaming in there. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was an insane op to play, and there's a lot of CQB going on, a lot of mines, but yeah, it was a great time. Thoughts, wisdom, anything else, Karma? No, I just want to thank everyone for watching and uh, make sure you tune in every Wednesday, every Saturday. Got the Ops cast every Tuesday on the twitch.tv slash squad ops. Um, yeah, just uh, make sure you stop by for more content. Come and join us if you play squad at, at uh, squadops.gg. And yeah, would love to see you guys around. Yep, I know the thing's been exploding around here. I think we've taught four basic sessions in the last four days, so... A lot of new people rolling in, a lot of new faces, uh, more ops to come, more excitement for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Well, I'm going to go head off. Uh, thank you for commenting, guys. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time.
Thanks, Karma. Thanks. For coming. All right. Thanks, Karma. Yeah. Final words, Remick. Oh man, just again, thank you everybody for being here, for paying attention, really joining us at these nights. You know, you could be somewhere else doing something else, but you chose to be here watching our stream and enjoying the gameplay with us. It's been great. Um, shout out to our man behind the cameras as well, Pen. Thank you, Pen. Yeah, definitely. All thank you this. very much, Pen. Yeah, definitely. All of this, the great views of these different cameras are all controlled by Pen. Me. And especially the cameramen as well. All of our cameramen, thank you, you guys. You guys give us great points of view. Yeah, thank you to all the squad leaders, fire team leads and command, uh, all the participants tonight. And I know it's not easy sometimes to come to these night maps and have things going on. So big shout out to them. Uh, once again, thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, check us out at squadoffs.gg if you want to join us. Oh, and the giveaway. I Oh, yes. We've mentioned the giveaway a few times. Oh, you've mentioned the giveaway. Oh, good, good, good. good. Mention it again, Karma. All right. So if you haven't uh, signed up for the Squad Ops giveaway, we are giving away a copy of Squad. So, uh, Penn, can you drop the link? Or uh, I got it, I guess. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's been there. It's been in there a few times. Just click on it. Yeah, just uh, hit up the link. And uh, with that, I think, uh, I think it's time for us to sign off here. All right, everybody. Have a good night. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, this is Squad Ops signing off for the night.